Stokes. Mariah Stokes. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my long-awaited review of the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Wave 2. This took me forever to get all of them at once because of how weirdly they released. I found one of them at Walgreens when they appeared early, two of them from Hasbro Pulse, and then Hasbro Pulse canceled my pink order, so I had to wait to find her at Walmart. I don't know why Hasbro and Amazon don't just ship them out when they come out, but at least the Target police didn't try to arrest me when I tried to buy them, so that's at least something. But let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to take a look at them all individually, and then we'll take a look at a comparison to some previous releases as well. But let's go ahead and start with MMPR Pink, who is the more rare one of the bunch right now because she's only packed one per case. So I think for the initial first few months, she'll be harder to find because like all the core fans are going to be picking her up, but she might end up shelf warming after a while. Kind of like Zed. Zed was rare for a hot second, but now I see him everywhere. But I think she's overall a pretty solid figure. We'll get into some comparisons in a second. I think the helmet sculpt is mostly solid. I think there is a little bit of a weird bulge here, which maybe it's just me, but there is something slightly off about it where it looks a little weird from some, some angles, especially compared to the figure art one for me. Like, I don't think it's bad or anything by any means. It's just kind of a nitpick, something I noticed, but I think it's overall pretty solid. I am a little bit bothered by the discrepancies in the colors here. Like, you can see this is a bit of a darker pink and this is a light one. Unless that's the way it is in the show and I never noticed, but I don't think it is. And as you can see, it's a much more, like, conservative girl mold than some of the the Bandai America ones we're doing, and I think it's overall pretty solid in that regard, and it's overall pretty decent. I'm not saying it's the best figure I've ever seen, but I think it's pretty solid, I and mean, it's our, really our first girl mold that, I, yeah, actually it is, I was just realizing that. I think we got so many other ones for Legacy that I was thinking about it differently, but you get pretty par for the course articulation, you get the, the range of movement here, the hinge joint, you got your elbow joint here, it's a little bit, you know, thinner than the guy's one, so it's not, I don't think it's going to break or anything, but just something worth noting. And then you got your ball joint here at the hand, you have a nice joint here at the leg, swiveling, you got your knee joints, they're a little bit clicky there, double knee joint, you have a nice joint here at the, almost at the leg, well I guess it is the leg, it's the end of the leg, aka the foot, so you can kind of get some decent little movement here, so when you're posing it, you can have it do some like outward poses, like like that, which is kind of neat. And then you have the chest and waist articulation as per usual, man, the, the camera really wants to focus on the guys in the background, like what the hell. And then the nice head and neck articulation as well. And no loose joint problems, which is overall really nice. You have the nice details here on the belt. It doesn't come off too much. Like, it's pretty painted on there. It doesn't really stick out or anything. Uh, as for accessories, as you can see, she does come with the power bow, which she's holding, which is pretty simple to do, so I really don't have any huge problems with it. I mean, it's just white with a couple red stripes on there. And she has her sidearm here, the blade blaster. What's nice about it, though, is it actually comes in the blaster mode. Like, if you recall, the Legacy ones only included sidearms. There was a couple, but almost all of them only came with the sidearms rather than the signature weapon. But the problem with MMPR ones is it was in the closed mode. I mean, would it have been nice to have the closed mode for this for just sitting there and if I wanted to have it in blaster mode, be it in blaster mode? Sure. But I'd far prefer to have it in this mode if it's the only thing you're including. So that's already a nice plus, which is something that I appreciate. I still think that was one of the weirdest moves. Like, I, I think it was stupid in general to, for the legacy ones to not have, like, the signature weapon and go for the sidearm instead. But it's like, okay, whatever, I'll accept it. But then for these guys, it made them so boring. She's definitely going to fall over. Like, I could see it. You know what? You're going to lie down. There we go. That's what's going to happen. So accessories-wise, she comes packed in with some nightmare fuel right there. Like, I think this is one of the worst ones, to be honest. Like, it's not awful. It does kind of look like her, but also it terrifies me to my core. So, it's definitely a little bit weird, but, you know, it's still nice that they include those. She also comes with an effect part version of the bow. You hold it, which is really neat. I think it's one of the cooler, more unique effect parts. And then she has two extra hands right here. Just kind of one fist hand and one just kind of sprawled out action hand. Then you also get a regular bow, so if you're not fancy and you don't want to have the fancy effect part. And then I forgot to show off, like in the hand she has on her, you obviously have one to hold the weapon, but this one's specifically designed to hold the bows, which I think is a really nice touch and I really appreciate that. 
Okay, now let's move on to Red Ranger here. Red Ranger, Red Ranger. It's actually really funny, like, other the figure art was the only thing we had for a long time, and now there's like three different versions of this figure, which we'll take a look at in a second. And I'm definitely mostly happy with this figure. I think the head sculpt is really well done. I think it looks a little bit more accurate than the figure art one, which we'll get to again shortly here. But the figure art one's just a little bit too slender, and I think they did a really good job on this one. I'm really happy with it. I think this could maybe have a little bit more of a distinct shine, but overall, Overall, I'm pretty happy with it, like I said just four seconds ago. I think the neck is a little bit too stout. I wish it was a little bit more balanced in that regard. I think the color and everything is nice on it, and they did a good job of making it look like that leathery material, especially in comparison to the regular spandex ones and kind of having the folds and stuff to make it seem more realistic. You have the Morpher painted pretty decently. You come with one of his weapons here, which is pretty solid. You have an effect part too, which we'll get to in a second. But overall, pretty solid. I'm going to be honest, my only real problem, I mean, I have the nitpicks about the proportions around the neck, but my only real problem is this piece here. These This little backpack piece is a separate piece, and I know like in the show it, it does look like that, like it almost looks like, what what is this? It's like a backpack without a backpack. Like. It seems like some really cool future trend, like, you know, all the backpacks in the future are just the straps. I mean, I guess it's like the military thing where, kind of reminiscent, maybe, to like when they have those holsters with the guns in them and then they have their little transpot here. But, I don't know, it's weird. But, I don't like that this is a separate piece. Like, I get the idea behind it because technically, in a way, it looks like that in the show. But it creates this weird annoyance when you're moving it around where it's coming off, and you can probably take it off there pretty easily. And also, like, sometimes when I'm posing it, it'll puff it up and it'll look like a linebacker or that he's getting ready to to run a marathon, so I'm not sure why they made that choice. It's not always a huge deal, but it definitely bothers me a little bit. I'm pretty par for the course articulation here, which is going to be the same for gold. Your nice range of motion here, your elbow joint, your nice swiveling here. Almost, well, I guess there is a knee joint here, but I was going to say, almost call this a knee. This is the knee and this is the leg, but nice joint here, just like on pink, and then the nice double knee joint here. Again, really clicky. No loose joints on any of these. Just going to go ahead and say that right now. Get your foot joint here chest and waist articulation, and then the head and neck articulation, so all that fun stuff. Very solid figure, I just wish they had not made that a separate piece. Like, what do you guys think about that? Do, would do you like it being the separate piece, or do you prefer it not to be? I'm kind of curious, because that put me off even from the initial pictures. Um, so. Accessories wise, you do get this head, which as you saw from the beginning bit, I think it looks pretty solid like Devin. It's even got the earring, which is a nice, is that supposed to be an earring? Are they supposed to be earrings? Does he wear earrings in the show? Now I'm just questioning my reality. Am I from a different timeline? I mean, yes, but also, regardless, I think it looks pretty solid like him. It makes him look a little bit more serious than he usually is. And as I mentioned from the beginning bit, it does kind of look like Bushmaster from uh, Luke Cage. Like, Marvel has the same line, right? They could just easily make a Bushmaster figure. Like, I, I thought about that because someone had posted it online and I thought it was pretty funny. So I, I could not mention that. He also comes with two extra traditional figure arts closed fist hands. I know it's not a figure art, but that just makes me think of it. You have the Cheetah Beast Blaster, which he never uses outside of the cockpit as of Beast Morpher Season 1. It's a cool inclusion. It almost makes me wish that it included the Squidward Mode helmet. Maybe that would have driven costs up, and I guess I would rather have the civilian head to keep things consistent. But I would totally buy a Squidward head one in the future. Then you have its effect part, which is this real digitally Digimon looking one, which is very fitting for the show. And I really, really like it. It fits on the sword nicely. I think it's a really cool bit that's really unique. Again, one of my more favorite effect pieces. Moving on to my man Nate here. This is a very, very solid figure. I really like it. You do have that sort of separate piece bit going on here, but it's not as bothersome since it just becomes the shoulders. And it just, I mean, you have stuff like this where it looks like he's taking a tiny jacket off but it just doesn't bother me as much. If possible, I do wish it would have just been a solid piece, but overall, it's not as huge of a deal. I feel that the gray is a little bit too light on there, but it's not so bad. I think they did a really good job on the helmet sculpt. It's a really nice actual gold, not a urine color. I really don't have too many problems with proportions when it comes to the helmet or the neck. I think they did a really good job on it. As I said before, I think the gold looks really good. It plays off of the black really nice. It's kind of annoying to have those bits there. They kind of stick out. I wish those were also black, so it kind of blended in a little bit more, but kind of a nitpick. Uh, same compliments here about the way they use the material look for that, and then you got the armored bits down here. As you can see, he comes with the striker morpher, and the visor doesn't fold out 0 out of 10. Just kidding. But yeah, that's solid. And then you have the striker saber here, which is pretty solid. The gray on here is a little bit boring, but nothing too major. Basically, the same articulation as red, and no loose joint problems, as I mentioned. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with him. I think I'm, I like him a little bit more than reds, just because you don't have the discrepancy as much 
for me with the neck and then you don't have the linebacker looking things here. All right, now here we have, oh wait, rewind. I forgot to show his accessories. Sorry, Magnet Defender. So for Nate, you have two extra hands, you have a fist hand and then you have like, it's going to be mental or it's going to be metal. You know, that's a Michael Scott joke, but you have that hand there, also Spider-Man. Then you have this effect part for him, which is just kind of a generic effect part a little bit, not as cool as the other ones in my opinion. And then you have, of course, his head sculpt, which actually looks fairly close to him. It makes him look a little bit soulless. I kind of wish it had the glasses. I know there's the promo photos of him wearing the glasses in suit, and I, I can't remember if he had the glasses on when he took his helmet off somewhere around the finale arc, but I kind of wish that it did. I don't know what, whether that would have been accurate or not, whether he didn't have the glasses on or not, whatever. Anyway, now, sorry, Magna Defender, now it's your time to shine. This, in my opinion, is the strongest figure of the set. I mean, in general, it's kind of more long-awaited because he's a fan-favorite character, and there hasn't been as many opportunities for a figure for these guys. I mean, I guess the same is true for Gold, with the only one actually recently being the other Hasbro basic figures, but this is a very nice figure. I have very few complaints about it. I mean, just looking at it, the proportions on it are very well done. In terms of the helmet, the helmet is very accurate. In terms of the neck proportions to the helmet looks nice. The armor looks nice. It's got a nice matte finish to it. Uh, there's not too many discrepancies there. I mean, I'm sure there could be some nitpicks like I have here or there. There's a little bit scrape on his chest there, which is kind of annoying. And there's a little bit of a, a paint scrape here. But just in terms of the sculpt, I think it's very, very well done. I'm really happy with it. Like I said, I think it's the strongest of the set. Uh, just so I don't forget the accessories. He does come with his sword here, which actually comes out here of the sheath. So that's really nice. Pretty decently detailed. Maybe could have been a little bit better, a little bit more shine to it. But you have the holster here, which attaches to his like sash belt here. And then you also have the blaster mode, which can attach there, which is nice. You have a blaster effect, which is cool. No alternate head because this is meant to be the original Magna Defender version before it was Mike, even though the costume is the exact same. Like, I'm curious why they did that and why they brought it up in such a way. Like, I can't, I mean, I know he's a popular character amongst the fandom, but I just don't think in terms of overall sales to casuals and the fandom, it's warrants another figure unless they do like a solar ranger magnet defender figure that happens to have mike's head that you can use on this or a dual pack or something we'll see but look wise i think he's the strongest he looks really really nice i'm really happy with him the articulation is basically all the same you do have a little bit of working around in terms of the cape and stuff and the armor bits and then this but it's nothing too huge that's like absolutely hindering it. It's just a little bit extra bulk to work with, no skull to work with. And I like the material for the cape too. Like I love the way that this looks. It makes it look like a cloth, but it's a very solid material and it's not one of those weird ones where it's just like cloth and wiring, which is just kind of weird for me. So I'm very, very happy with this figure. Not perfect. I think the most annoying thing is honestly the, the paint mistakes on there. But oh, other than that, it's a very nice figure and I'm really happy with it. Okay, before we get to the final verdict, I'm going to quickly bring in uh, some of the examples of previous releases, starting with Pink Onward. Okay, starting with Kimberly here, these are all the ones I have on hand, except for the Automorphin one, which I didn't include. There was also a regular, like, standard five-inch, like, action hero-esque figure for her that I, I have. I just don't know where it is. But as you can see, right here, we have Lightning. Here we have Legacy. This is Figure Arts. And then these are the four-inch MMPR 2010 ones. That one's just kind of there for fun. Like, this is obviously an entirely different type of figure. Like, if you're more into this scale and style, then sure, but obvious improvement there. I think that the helmet for me is more of a perfect mix between these, like that has a little bit more detail on there. And let me just, sorry, we're gonna move you out of the way. You're not even a serious candidate. But just in terms of the scale of the helmet and the way they're they're done, I think that the perfect blend is somewhere in between here. I think that this could stand to go up a little bit just like here. Like there's some more details and refinement on this one, but I'm just talking about the general shape, I think is a little bit more uh, even between the two. And then this one's a little bit skinnier, which I can sometimes be more accurate I think that the proportions in general are a little bit better on this like a little bit less skinny which is kind of nice obviously this one includes a hand that just has the the bow molded into it whereas this one's a nice one that can hold it which is better than this one which features none like that as you can see it's a great bit taller the color is a little bit less accurate you have the 
girls there a little bit more pronounced. The helmet's actually not so bad on that one. It looks a little bit weird, but it's not so bad. But you can see the clear difference in the color in terms of these both being a little bit more accurate. So like, I think actually if you were to just mash these two together, they would make the perfect figure. But there's positive and minuses to both. But honestly, the G-Ranger figure arts hold up in a lot of ways more than I expected. All right, let's move on to the next guy. Okay, here we have our three options for Beast Morphers Red. Here we have the standard Hasbro figure, Lightning obviously, and then figure arts. This is actually a pretty solid figure for the price. There's definitely a clear improvement and clear upgrade and posability to this, which is, you know, double the price more or less. But I just want to give props to this for being pretty solid for its price tag. But the helmet's definitely more accurate, more articulation. Uh, I do prefer that these are molded on though. That's kind of a nice touch. So this is an obvious overall upgrade. Sort of more of the thing you want to talk about in terms of comparison is these two. This one's obviously a little bit more skinny. Again, I think the perfect marriage lies between these two in terms of proportions. This guy's maybe a bit too buff and this guy's maybe a bit too skinny. I, like I said, the helmet's a little bit more accurate on this, but I do appreciate the more standout visor that looks much more like it does in the show, especially with how unique the Go Busters visors are, which is nice. And he has a little bit more detailed weapons and stuff like that, maybe a little more articulation possibilities. I still do like the figure arts, but I think that the perfect marriage between the two of these would create the perfect figure. I don't think either one is 100% the correct one, but I definitely think this upgraded some in terms of a little bit more accurate proportions and it's really like a stark contrast when you see this how skinny it is again i also prefer this just being one molded piece i'm really not a fan of that decision okay let's move on to okay gold. so for gold obviously other than the large scale nutcracker figure we only have one other comparison which is the standard hasbro figure which again i got to give him props this is very solid looking i think even more so than red for half the price and i, I wish that the this color was a little bit different and it wasn't uh, a separate piece but there's definitely some upgrades in terms of details and in terms of articulation but these are more comparable I would say than the two reds even in terms of details so like if you're looking to save some money and you don't care as much about articulation being more like diverse then this is actually a pretty solid choice but they're more comparable than you would think for the different figures the only other thing I wanted to draw attention to because I know it's a question a lot of people were wondering is how well it fits in with the figure arts because we only ever got the core three and then the buddy roids so it is taller you can see it is taller and there's some noticeable like bulk difference but I think if you wanted to skip the Beast Morphers Lightning figures and just get gold and then hopefully eventually silver and you have them all posed, like, you know, they might not all be standing at attention like this and you have them posed at least somewhat crouching, I think they fit in, fit in. They fit in pretty decently. Like, just, I think so. Like, it's not perfect, but if you don't want to spend the extra money and you already have this and you're good enough with this but you want a gold, it, it works, honestly, in my opinion, just fine. Especially if you're not going to be posing them in a way that's always going to be comparing their heights. Now, for Magna Defender, it's really quite simple. The only one that I really have is this old, original 5-inch figure from Bandai. I know there was, like, a couple armored ones, and then there's stuff like the one that came with the Defender Torozord, which is in his armor. But I don't own any other ones. I'm not sure if there was too many others, but there hasn't been any action hero or legacy figures. So there's a clear upgrade for it. I was going to do a bit about how this one's trash because it doesn't say defend the galaxy because this has a little button where it would say defend the galaxy but it stopped working so I couldn't do that bit but just know it would have been at least sort of funny-ish. Uh, it wasn't Zane's voice though which is 0 out of 10 because all the Lost Galaxy figures had in space voices but yeah clear upgrade here which is what makes the figure even more awesome is not only is it the strongest of them in my opinion but it's one of the ones that was most in need of an upgrade. All right, so that's about it for this one. Overall, I think this is a solid wave. Definitely not perfect. I have some nitpicks with the wave, like in throughout it, but I think it's a solid wave. I think Kimberly's honestly pretty solid. Most of the complaints I have are small nitpicks. I mean, the helmet thing is definitely feels like a personal thing. I do, I'm kind of bothered by the color discrepancy, and I'm a little bit annoyed still by that like vest bit which I think looks awkward I'm not sure why they did it but otherwise I think it's mostly pretty solid I think it's really cool that you can have this guy now as a, a figure that sort of fits in with the figure arts and stuff like that but I definitely think he's he's the star of the wave if I had to recommend one out of this wave despite my love for these suits it would definitely be this figure so yeah a solid but imperfect wave until next time don't forget like comment subscribe and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can get notifications for all my videos Till next time Dawson Ryder signing out